If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, December 10th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Camille Adams and Kelly Benjamin will join us shortly in the Finice Monitor. They're both swimmers at Texas A&M University and they will be looking to bring the Aggies their best finish ever at the NCAA Championships next spring. They're off to a good start so far after some great performances at their home pool during the Art Adamson invite. And to talk about that and more, Camille and Kelly join us from College Station, Texas. Ladies, it's good to see you. How are you today? Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you guys on the show. How's life at A&M right now? It's good. It's exciting. Finals week's coming up, so just getting ready for that. Christmas training's coming, so we're, <laughs> so we're getting ready. Well, Camille, I guess you get to skip a little bit of that Christmas training. You'll get to go to Scotland for Duel in the Pool. That's got to make you even, that was probably one of the reasons you decided to go. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. It'll be nice. I'm definitely excited. Never done a duel in the pool, so it'll be fun taking Bree and Sarah along with me as well. Well, from what I understand, it's pretty much a two-day duel meet, so you guys know all about that really well. <laughs> yeah. Just not against other college swimmers. It's against, right. you know, the <laughs> right. best European swimmers in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to talk about this um, invitational you guys had a couple weeks ago. I'd imagine you guys are on cloud nine. It's just a, a great meet for you guys. A few a cuts, some a couple of school records here and there. Um, Kelly, I want to start with you. Just tell me how you how you thought the meet went for you. I think with the performance that everyone did at the meet, it's definitely a confidence booster going into, like I said, Christmas training, training harder to get ready for SECs and NCAA's. Uh, we knew we were going to swim fast, but I don't think we knew what was actually going to come. So having school records on top of a cut, it's just it's a great confidence booster for the next upcoming months. Did it make you feel a little bit more relaxed that it was at your home pool? Yes. The nice thing was we got to our family. It was very easy for our families to come and actually stay and sleep in our own beds, which is huge. And... Um, just the pool in general, our, we have one of the, I feel like we have one of the best facilities in the country. So we're very lucky to swim in an um, atmosphere like that. And Camille, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm, I was comparing this meet this year to what you guys did last year at the Phil Hansel invite. And it looked like you guys maybe pulled back a little bit on your preparation, you know, maybe not a full out bore taper because, um, you know, Bria Larson set American records last year and you and Sarah were swimming lights out last year. And the, while the times were impressive, it looks like, you know, you guys pulled back a little bit this year and, and, and knowing that last, at last NCAAs, you guys weren't able to replicate the swims you guys did at Phil Hansel. So am I reading that wrong? You guys are kind of pulling back and saying we're going to save our best swims for March? Yeah, I don't really think it was necessarily holding back. Um, I think we would have liked to put up the times that we did last year. Um, Sarah's been out of the water for a little bit with some shoulder rehab stuff, and so that was kind of her, um, I guess, kind of hold back. And we kind of just did the same thing we did last year, actually. I was kind of been more focusing on my fly and my IM, so I was really, really happy to go 152 right now. Um, I saw some times post in October and got a little nervous, and Steve was like, no, don't worry about it. Your time's coming. And so I was definitely extremely happy with my butterfly and I think that's put me in a good spot for NCAAs and SECs coming up. Um, I think the times were right where they needed to be and um, we're not too worried about it. Yeah and it, obviously it paid off. You guys are number one in the College Swim Coaches Association poll. Um, how does it feel to, to be on top of that poll? It's exciting. I mean, I don't, we might have been before, this might be the first time, I don't really know. Um, as, I mean, ranking it is exciting, but at the end, it's what you get into play. So um, taking that with a grain of salt, but at the same time, definitely letting it motivate us for Christmas training and just looking forward to um, SEC season and NCAAs. So Kelly, when, when you guys found out you were ranked number one, I'm sure there was a team meeting or a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a celebration. Tell me what happened when the team found out. Uh, when we found out, I mean, as you probably know, <laughs> Twitter blew up, Facebook blew up. 
Um, I know I just saw it on Twitter and I was like, oh my gosh, we're number one. And so um, family found out just through social media and it definitely, like I said, it got us excited, but also just like College Station in general, other athletes were coming up to us saying, hey, I heard y'all are first, like that's awesome. And it's just great to know, especially in Aggieland, that everyone's here and you have the 12th man match. Yeah, and, and obviously in that, the 12th man applies mostly to football, but I guess that does that, do you guys feel that also applies to swimming as well? Yeah, I don't think it just applies to football at all. I mean, when we swim, a lot of our dual meets here, the stands are packed, which we don't see when we go anywhere else. And that's not really something that's really special about a and I mean, when we swam Texas, the entire stands were completely packed, which is really, it makes a dual meet even more exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to go back to that dual meet against Texas. What an amazing meet. I mean, it came down to the final relay. And I know you guys aren't in the same conference as Texas anymore, and you didn't get to swim them last year. So, but I would imagine this is still a pretty strong rivalry with, with the two of you guys. Yeah, I think it kind of, it always will be just from the past history. It kind of carries with it. Um, but it was exciting. We were really happy with the times that we put up um, at that point in the season and for not being rested or anything like that. Um, I know they had had a meet the day before, so that might have put a little bit of a toll on them. But it's nice to still race those girls and see those girls around the pool. Um, I've kind of grown up with the majority of them, so it's nice still being able to race them and compete against them for sure. Definitely being on that final relay, um, the group of us girls just – um, the, having the crowd cheering for us, and not only the crowd, but the yell leaders were there. And I know just as of being being on that relay, that was one of the most exciting moments, besides the our tiebreaker last year. Just like it, it kind of brought back just that memory from last year. Just like, wow, we're um, it's just it comes down to this relay, and it, it's just an awesome feeling. Yeah. I guess it, Kelly, it's probably a little bit rehearsal for for the SECs. I mean, this is. Rehearsal. I mean, this SECs is a big meet. You know, whether it may or may not come down to the last relay. I mean, it's it kind of gives you a rehearsal for you know what that big final race is going to be like. Yeah, like I said, like I don't think anything could be more stressful than that tiebreaker that we had last year. And so, up from starting from there, it just it's definitely helped us be ready for it. Could come down to the last relay, and um, four girls coming together and just competing for a and so it definitely helps us. Camille, I want to talk about the 200 fly. You're, you're going in as the reigning NCAA champion um, and, and looking on a broader scale and long course. I mean, you've been kind of the go-to 200 flyer now since the, the London Olympics. How does it feel to have that stature? Yeah, I mean, I don't look at it so much as that way. 200 fly has been my baby race for quite some time now and it's the race that I have the most fun in and so that is what I tried to do. I took um, this race, I really um, wanted to get as close to my school record as I could at the invite and so I um, kind of mentally prepared a little bit more this year for that race than the other um, ones and um, my 100 fly was extremely, extremely good the day before and so I knew that um, my butterfly was where it should be and um, just really happy with the time I put on, not really thinking so much about the pressure of, you know, being an NCAA champion before that sort of thing, just having fun with it. What was your takeaway from this summer at the World Championships? Yeah, I learned a lot. I feel like um, as I go to more international meets and uh, kind of get more experience with the sport, it's helping me um, just kind of become being able to adapt to international meets. It's very different than anything that I've ever done before in um, the national level um even different than the national level and so just the experience i think is great and kelly what what do you and how does you and the rest of the team learn from the experiences that camille and and bria take from their international experience what do they bring back that that you're able to absorb for yourself i think what they really bring back is just just the whole atmosphere of a team Uh, i think our team is so much it's just very unique from other teams uh what they especially when they came back from london and world champs they would they brought back their little things such as their rookie skits or stuff like that and now we are starting to incorporate that into our team and um it definitely brings the camaraderie of the team together because we all we all want each other to do great and um seeing them at the national level is just uh i know all of us are rooting for them and we want them to succeed and be the best that they can be and 
uh, I I definitely think it just brought, it brings our team a lot closer together. Well, it definitely does look like you guys are really have that team aspect down. Um, obviously, it's going to be very important at the NCAA's. Uh, do you guys have a particular place in mind for the NCAA's, or is it just be the best you can be? Yeah, I think um, our team this year we're a lot, we're really focused. We're having a good time. We're having a lot more fun this year than I have the past few years. I don't know if it's because I'm a senior or what it is, but. I'm just really having a good time this year. We have an amazing group of freshmen that um, are so very different. But looking back, I'm like, I don't know what this team did before they got here. Um, they're so individual and so unique, but they add something to this team that hasn't been here before, and it's definitely exciting. Well, that's great to hear. It's really good to hear. Uh, before we go, ladies, I want to submit you two to our final five. These are five questions we asked all of our guests to get to know a little bit better. Um, let's see, Camille, I'll ask this first question to you, um, as a 400 im -er, if you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Oh my goodness. I would probably put the breaststroke first and the butterfly last, <laughs> so I can have a little bit more time to play catch up after it. Okay. Uh, Kelly, next question is for you. What's a career or job you would most like to try? Oh, if I could have one dream job. This sounds so bad. <laughs> sounds funny, but I would love to work a Basset Hound Rescue. I am completely obsessed <laughs> with dogs, and so if I could be surrounded by Basset Hounds every single day for the rest of my life, I'd be a very happy girl. <laughs> I don't think that sounds bad. Hey, do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Camille, the next question is for you. On the flip side of that, what's a career that you would definitely not like to try? Definitely not like to try. Um, oh my goodness. And honestly, I just want to be around kids. Anything that wouldn't have kids, I don't think I would enjoy near as much. So we're both education majors, so we do love being around kiddos. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember last time we talked, you were really excited about uh, where you were going with your education major. So I would imagine that's still a goal for you. It is. It definitely is. All right, um, next question's for you, Kelly. If uh, you could change or add any of the rules in the swimming rule book, what would it be? Go past the 15. <laughs> that, being a backstroker, go past the 15, because yeah. I know there's been times where it's kind of been close. Been a little bit too close. Yeah, well, I understand that. That's definitely one of our more common answers on the show. All right, last question I'm going to pose to both of you. We'll start with you, Camille. Um, where do you like to go most for vacation? Vacation. Um, Barcelona is actually my favorite city in the world. Okay. And how about uh, you, Kelly? Actually, my vacation is back home in Phoenix, Arizona. I don't get to go home that often, and so when I do get to go home, it's very uh, treasured to me, and um, it's just something that I truly enjoy. Well, I'm sure we're out here in Phoenix, too. I'm sure you do not miss the intense summers. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I was actually there uh, for Thanksgiving break, so it was actually really nice over there. Yeah, it was a good good time to be here. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm sure you're looking forward to finals and, col and Christmas training. And uh, Camille, have a safe trip over to Scotland, and um, have a great holiday season, ladies. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks you, Jim. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We're glad you joined us. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.